Praise the Lord. Praise God forevermore. Welcome back to our program here at ABN. We are live, Mubasha in the flesh. Here we are with Robert Spencer once again. George Washington had a pressing issue. He needed to go. But we do have, back by popular demand, the one and only David Wood. Brother David, yeah, welcome I, back to our program. I showed up here with Clark Kent and Bruce Wayne, and we find out that George Washington, Superman, and Batman just took off. Yes. And Horrible. Well, at least one of them was a Trinitarian Christian. Brother Robert, <laughs> <laughs> Brother Robert we, I understand from your blog there's this big deal that the Muslims are trying to uh, promote here in the United States of America in the name of peace and tolerance and love, which of course Islam embodies so well. Uh, this idea that jihad is not jihad. Now, just before the show, we asked an Arab Christian, uh, he completely unaware of the topic of our program tonight, what does jihad mean? And do you remember his answer? He said, jihad. <laughs> jihad means jihad. It's like, you idiot. Is it not self-explanatory? And then but he went on and he said, it means killing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yes. Exactly. And, and so uh, when he said, you know, he didn't say you idiot, but that was the implication. Well, I um, often think the same thing when I ask you questions. Yeah, yes, I understand. No. <laughs> unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, not, not to demean the American public, but their ignorance is so great True. That, that, that this type of thing can be pulled over on and, America. And, 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 and that's really, that's, that's how Islam thrives. Yes, right? yes. So Islam... That's that stage one you were talking about yeah, in the previous yeah, yeah. show. Islam, if, if Islam can come in and conquer an area, it will come in and conquer an area. Right. When it can't, Which it, it can't. can't. Its greatest asset in areas that it cannot conquer, that are too powerful. The United States is too powerful for a Muslim military to come in and conquer. When Muslims cannot conquer Deception. an enemy... Its greatest asset is ignorance. It's the, the greatest tool it can have is ignorance. The ignorance and of so, the enemy and their deception. Yeah, I mean, if you think about, so, so in America, for instance, there are around 20,000 conversions to Islam each year on, on, on average. Yeah. If you look at why these people convert, because everyone I run into, I converted, I converted mm. to Islam. Really, why? I get the most appalling nonsense I've ever heard in my life. I've never mm. seen anyone anyone who converted to Islam after doing a careful study of the Muslim sources. I always, I always get the, the, the I'm, where are you getting that? Where are you getting that the from? Because Christians here's how it works. dancing in the church. Yeah, 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 yeah. it goes like this. It goes, uh, because the message, when a Muslim preacher goes into an area where people are ignorant, where people are ignorant about Islam, yeah. he can say pretty much anything he wants. So, oh, you like peace and tolerance? That's what Islam teaches. Yeah. Let me show you a verse right here. Mm -hmm. You believe in women's rights? Yeah. Muhammad was a champion of women's <laughs> Absolutely. rights. You love science? Did you know that the Quran is a scientific masterpiece? Yeah. And they spout all this people? nonsense. Muhammad must have been oh, black. Yeah, Muhammad. Muhammad. Yeah. You know, I have a friend who is an ex-Muslim, yeah. who is actually a black American convert to Islam mm -hmm. before he was an ex-Muslim, right. who became rather prominent mm -hmm. in American Muslim circles. I'm not going to identify him now because he is not known as an ex-Muslim okay. and is very highly placed uh, and is still in the confidence of some of the leading American Muslim leaders. Mm. But he told me that when he converted to Islam, he did so on the basis of claims that he later found out to be false, mm. that uh, Islam taught racial equality. And he had no idea about Arab supremacism <laughs> or about the Arabization of all non-Arab Muslims, the necessity to take on an Arab name and learn Arabic and and, 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 and to uh, sublimate one's own culture Not and one's own life. Not to mention the, the, uh, the tremendous slave trade of black Africans. Absolutely. To oh, in derogatory terms. And, 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 and he, he, he which first dwarfed uh, our, you know, He said that he hadn't even read the Quran when he converted, but he was going by what these preachers told him. And when he actually read the Quran for himself, he was appalled. But by then he was in. Well, how does Ma this Muhammad, Muhammad yeah. called Ethiopians raisin heads, just in case anyone. Yeah, but he, but, but, but no, 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 that can't be raisin true. Heads, raisin that heads, that can't be true them. because <laughs> in the beginning of our, pro that must be a compliment mm -hmm. because in the be in the first program you <laughs> yeah, can't. Muhammad you can't liked dates. Anybody. Muhammad liked he dates, dates, so he probably liked they, raisins as well, especially so dates with nine-year-olds. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving right along. Praise God. Here we are, and we're talking tonight about jihad. Now, now, Brother Robert, for you and I and Brother David, even George Washington knows that this current my jihad is to lose weight, whatever, so, such and such a thing, is absolute ridiculous nonsense. And yes. yet, and yet, we're, it's nonsense to us, but not to anyone else, including the media yes. in this country or oh, the government. Oh, the media has been very excited about this campaign, and I think a little background is needed Please. in case people are not familiar with this campaign. Uh, Ahmed Rehab is the executive director of the Chicago chapter 
of the uh, Hamas-linked Muslim Brotherhood Front Group, the Council on American Islamic Relations, mm. which I believe should always be referred to by the Homeric epithet, Hamas-linked care. Mm. And Hamas-linked care is actually not behind this program as such. Mm. I think it embarrasses even them <laughs> with its cynicism and mm. its outlandish claims. Mm. But Ahmed Rehab is no stranger to uh, applying cosmetics to unpleasant realities. <laughs> uh, a few years back, he had on his personal website some pictures of himself shirtless right. and wearing lipstick yeah. and tinted sunglasses. Yeah. Uh, What's which, that about, uh, by the way? I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure I even want to know the okay. story. But uh, the, the, the pictures nonetheless were there. And uh, now whenever I have a story about uh, Mr. Rehab, who's such a very pleasant and courteous gentleman after the example of Muhammad himself, mm. then I, uh, I, I do him the favor of putting up those pictures to uh, show people just uh, exactly how far he is following the example of the Muhammad that we discussed in the last program who recommended and practiced uh, uh, tongue suck sucking. Yes, uh, his male followers and so on. But uh, aside from that, Ahmed Rehab, obviously no stranger to cosmetics, is now trying to apply cosmetics to the concept of jihad itself and has launched a campaign uh, in coalition with, uh, uh, with, with other Muslims, but not with care as such, although certainly they have not disavowed it mm -hmm. officially. Uh, the campaign mm -hmm. is on buses and in uh, various other transportation systems in response, actually, to ads that Pamela Geller and I formulated, uh, quoting a Quran verse, which are now in New York subways. On every clock in the New York subway system, you will find the uh, burning twin towers, a photo of the burning twin towers with the verse, soon we will cast terror into the hearts mm. of the unbelievers, chapter 3, verse 151, mm. which is designed to illuminate the motives and the goals of the jihad terrorists, motives and goals which their allies in the United States today among the stealth jihadis like Ahmed Rehab are working so hard to obfuscate and to cover up mm. and to deceive people, again in imitation of Muhammad who said, war is deceit. So this campaign, it features uh, happy, smiling, attractive Muslims who give the, what they say is my jihad, their jihad. They say my jihad is to stay fit despite my busy schedule. And there's a yeah. picture of a woman wearing a hijab yeah. and lifting a barbell. And we yeah. see she's getting in her exercise even though she's so busy. And that's her jihad. Yeah. A couple of uh, guys standing arm in arm and they says my jihad is to uh, make friendships across the aisle. Yeah. In other words, to, to, to make friends with people who don't agree with you. And this extraordinarily cynical campaign, which completely flouts the classical and traditional meanings of jihad in the Quran, in the example of Muhammad, and in Islamic law, it has been accepted with extraordinary enthusiasm on the part of the American media, which is always ready to carry water for these unsavory, cynical, and deceptive Islamic supremacists. Mm, mm. Well, Brother Robert, we, we do have some callers. Did you want to say anything else to kind of give the outline of the program this evening or before we get to the first caller? Believe it or not, I would. Yes, please. I would like to say a few words here. You may. And, and mainly, uh, Muhammad emphasized jihad. And Muslims, mm -hmm. Muslims are, are pointing out this means to strive or to struggle. He, he, was, saying, he was an aerobics instructor yeah, in so, Medina. And so there are different ways you can strive or struggle. So what's mm -hmm. your problem with jihad? It just means to strive or struggle. You can strive against all, all kinds of things, right? Lose weight. Yeah, yeah. You're, uh, striving, you're striving against overeating. You're striving against, you, you know, a stereotype, things, yeah. negative stereotypes. Yeah, absolutely. You can strive against various things. Sure. The problem with this is when we talk specifically about what we have a problem with, we're talking to violent. We're talking about violent jihad, yes. and Muslims know what this means, and it's very clear in the sources. And I'll give you a few quotations. <clears throat> Muhammad understood that there are different types of jihad, mm -hmm. and he says in Sunan Ibn Majah 2794, he's asked, "What's the best?" So it was narrated. This is Sunan Ibn Majah. It's one of their one of their collections of Sahih Sitta, the the reliable six collections they have. Uh, number 2794, it was narrated that Amr bin Abbasa said, I came to the Prophet and said, O Messenger of Allah, which jihad is best? He said, that of a man whose blood is shed and his horse is wounded. Now, mm. how often is your blood shed and your horse wounded while you're at Bally's? <laughs> Exercising. Yeah, well, not too well, often. Well, de it mean. depends. I mean, that actually does happen to me mm -hmm. fairly often. Yeah. <laughs> So, 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 but, so think about this. Muhammad, there's different kinds of jihad. Which one's the best? Yeah. The one that involves you and your horse getting 
wounded. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Now, let me quote two more passages very briefly. We'll be quoting more <laughs> passages throughout the evening. But right. uh, Sunan Ibn Majah, 2763. It was narrated from Abu Hurairah that the Messenger of Allah said, whoever meets Allah with no mark on him as yeah. a result of fighting in his cause, he will meet him with a deficiency. I see. If you stand before Allah at the yeah. judgment and you don't have visible wounds on your body from fighting the unbelievers. From building friendships across from the other. Fighting, yes. Yeah. He will meet him with a deficiency. So now, you're, again, you're again fat, how often you do you get weight. these visible wounds on your body from making friends across <laughs> the aisle? I would say... Uh, it's never happened to me, right? <laughs> and what's he talking about here? Yeah. Any, anyone who reads this knows exactly what he's yeah. talking about. One more. Sunan An-Nasai, another collection of uh, Sahih Sitta, 3099. It was narrated from Abu Huraira that the Prophet said, whoever dies without fighting or having thought of fighting, he dies on one of the branches of hypocrisy. Mm. So if you are physically able to fight, you are supposed to fight. If you convert to Islam and you're a 90 old man, you don't have the opportunity to go out and wage jihad, you at least have to think of fighting. Have to, oh man, I wish I could fight. You're, that, 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 is a, that is an option for you. So, notice, if you die without either actually going out and fighting in the name of Allah, uh, or you don't at least wish you could, wish you had that opportunity, you die on one of the branches of hypocrisy. You're a <coughs> hypocrite. What does Muhammad think of? Oh, I, I just want to make friends across the aisle. That's what Islam is all about. It's all about getting along with people. Muhammad mm -hmm. says, you hypocrite. Yeah. You hypocrite. Allah has commanded you to wage jihad, and all you care about is making friends? What does that mean? It means you have absorbed Western values. Right. You have made Western civilization an idol above Allah, whose commands are very clear to you on how you're to treat the unbelievers. Mm -hmm. And what are, where are you going? This criticism going? was actually made by Hizb tahrir which evidently is not in on the war is deceit campaign here mm -hmm. and doesn't realize that while all, everything that you're saying is true, at the same time the Quran also in chapter 3 verse 28 says that uh, believers should not, take friends, should not take friends and protectors among unbelievers mm -hmm. unless it be done to guard themselves against them. Then the tafsir of Ibn Kathir explains that that means that we smile in the faces of some people, but behind their backs we curse them. Okay. Isn't that can, can, so we, can we actually uh, go into more detail on this after, we, after we put the sign? Just, I want to look at the sign on the friendship. We're going to get to the friendship one. Yeah. I really want to really go through the sources because people are going to think we're making this up. We'll go through 551, 328, and the commentaries. We've got them all, we've got them all right here. Go. And we, Man, a friendship one. Because, uh, that's a, that's a, <laughs> I mean, I mean that's, that's, that's the heart of it right there. How can you have a... A society that sticks together if you cannot you are not even allowed to be friends Do you want to show uh, so people are aware some of these placards uh, that, that are uh, yeah let's go through them and we'll get, to the, we'll get to the friend one and then we can see what Muslims are claiming that right. Islam teaches and then we'll look at what their prophet and their God actually teach right. um, well yeah, if you so if you'll call them. out we'll go ahead and show some of those uh, just JPEG files and, and brother uh, David you just tell our technicians when you want us to stop to comment on a particular one no we'll just look, we'll just look at the first one and, and oh, see the what first we think one. of it right, yeah, yeah what, what's the uh, let's look right, at the first see. one Right. My jihad is not judging people by no. their cover. My jihad is to not judge people by their cover. You see, What's judging yours? people, yeah. judging people by their cover. Yeah. All right, we, we can take it down. We've seen it. Uh, so, All my right. jihad is to not judge people by their cover. Okay. Clearly, that's um, a reference to the hijab, and, and uh, oh, it really, it, obviously, it yeah. it's it's designed to say you should not look down on this woman because she is covering her head. Mm -hmm. But yeah. wait a minute, the Quran commands women to cover their ornaments and stuff. There's some disagreement about what all this means. But if you go to the Hadith, very clear, you're supposed to be wearing a yes. covering. So wait a minute, what do you mean I'm not supposed to judge people? This is, I mean, this is, this is not us talking, this is a Muslim yeah, talking. Yeah, this is a Muslim. Say, who's, I am who's not who's supposed to judge. Not and, on, and, on, and on one side they have a, you know, a woman with a hijab on, the other woman, does, she has some, some, yeah. some, some other kind of thing. Notice right? what it doesn't you're not supposed say. To judge either. It doesn't say my jihad is to judge a woman who doesn't have cover. You know, it's not That's to judge. where it becomes dangerous. <laughs> yeah. Because w women who do not cover their heads yeah. have been threatened and even been killed in Muslim countries for not, and they're evidently being judged by their cover or lack thereof. Didn't, didn't an Egyptian cleric recently say, uh, he was asked about what if, what if Christian women don't, don't wear the veil? And he says, oh, they don't have to wear the veil as long as they want to get raped in yes, the streets. Yes, exactly. Yeah. When I was a kid and I grew up uh, going and visiting Iraq, even up until the year 2000, in Iraq, my aunts, my cousins, they could walk in the streets of Baghdad with no hijab, with Western clothes, no problem whatsoever. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, since our country went there and spread 
democracy uh, <laughs> no longer. Same thing in Egypt, mm -hmm. same thing in Libya, same thing now in all of these Muslim countries that Barack Hussein Obama, of course, has brought freedom and democracy to. Well, of course, as we know, democracy works one and once only in Islamic uh, country. Yes. As soon as they have true democracy, they have a truly democratic, democratic vote, voting in true Islam, and true Islam, of course, uh, just obliterates any shred of democracy left over. And that's what we have taking place. Go right ahead. The next one, do you want to look at the next uh, placard on jihad? Or? Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and look at our next sign. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> My jihad is to break stereotypes with humor. What's yours? <laughs> 270 million people killed in the name of Islamic <laughs> jihad over the past 14 centuries. It's so hilarious. Mm -hmm. Is that not they just Hilarious. died laughing after the Muslims put on the funny glasses. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I have a question because let's take that. Let's put that one back up again. Let's just assume that this is really the meaning of jihad. <laughs> now, now, let, now, let's insert this into one of the Quranic verses which uses the Arabic word jahada. Let's just take, for example, there's so many. Uh, let's leave that up. Surah 2, verse 218. It says, Lo, those who believe and those who immigrate and strive in the way of Allah, these have hope of Allah's mercy. Allah is forgiving and merciful. But no, let's use Ahmed Rehab's uh, definition of jihad. Uh, lo, those who believe and those who immigrate and fight stereotypes with humor in the way of Allah, those have hope of Allah's mercy. Allah is forgiving and merciful. So, I mean, or how about lose weight? Those who lay, lose weight in the way of Allah, <laughs> these have hope of Allah's mercy. So fat people are not going to make it, but, but skinny people have a better chance. And there again, you know, even, even in what you were uh, referring to earlier, you know, a mark of jihad. Well, I mean, if you're going to make jihad weight loss, fat people aren't going to, to paradise. You know, the mark of jihad is, is you see how you have the body is, is skinny and you've got lots of muscles. This is the mark of jihad. I mean, the whole thing. Just take what they're saying jihad means, insert it into any one of the many passages in the Quran that uses the Arabic word jihad or one of the derivatives thereof. It makes absolute no sense whatsoever. And yet they want us to believe that this is the true meaning of jihad. Of course, Muhammad, no doubt, chose these as his primary meanings. We can establish that from the seerah and he did. hadith. You're, you're, you often get bloodied and have marks all over your body from uh, wearing, you know, I mean, think, you've got the glasses on, then someone laughs so hard, they fall on you, and then you're all bloody yeah. and you stand before Allah, and you've got, your, you've, got your, uh, you've got your marks on your body from waging jihad. They break stereotypes in the cause of Allah. They <laughs> kill and are killed. It's, uh -huh. they, it means they, they, they killed them, you know, like, uh, like a comedian. I, I killed them out there tonight. Mm -hmm. That's all. Oh, Lord help us. Lord help us. Brother Robert, uh, once again, now, this is being pulled over American eyes. We say, now, this is being done uh, at the initiative of Ahmed Rehab in, in Chicago. But now, isn't this, is, is it so, to somewhat nationwide? Or is yeah, well, uh, Ahmed Rehab is at Care Chicago. Mm -hmm. yeah. But the uh, ads have also ran in, on San Francisco buses. Mm -hmm. And it may be that uh, CARE, as an organization, will endorse them soon and uh, spread them even farther. And so uh, we are hoping to put out a counter campaign yes. telling the truth about jihad. Pamela Geller and I developed a series of ads that are based on the My Jihad ads. Right. I don't know if you have images of yeah, these. Yeah, we'll, we'll show we, one. Uh, yeah, one later. All right. We have Osama bin Laden. Do Maybe we, have that we one? can show uh, one of those Basil? images of uh, uh, Robert it's, it's Spencer's. Sort of later in the series. Oh, is it? Uh, yeah, well, yeah. We have so some we'll callers. You want to take a caller okay. real quick? We'll get to them. We're going to yes. have a break in about ten minutes. Why don't we take one of our waiting callers right now? Welcome, dear caller. You're on the air with ABN. Hello. Hello. Welcome. You're on the air. Oh, gentlemen. Well, first, I want to thank you. It's a true enlightenment. Uh, your program has been uh, a great awakening for us. Um, first, I want to thank David. Uh, David, uh, it's, it's an absolute pleasure watching you along with Pastor Joe. And I guess the combination with Robert uh, makes uh, great team, three musketeers. Robert, uh, I read all your books. Thank you. And uh, I have uh, really been a major advocate of your newsletter and, the, um, of course, uh, your Jihad Watch. Uh, here is my comment tonight. Um, there's been uh, plenty of billboards that uh, you 
see around uh, the Florida area, and the billboards uh, are just as uh, misinforming um, um, uh, with the reference to your jihad uh, billboards. Uh, one of the billboards uh, states clearly with big uh, letters that Jesus is in the Quran uh, verses 35, I, be, I think, verses 35-2. Um, you see this billboard uh, in major, on major traffic areas in the Florida area. Now, here's my uh, question to you. Um, is this the same Jesus that we believe in, or is this Isa? And if that's, if that's the uh, message they're um, promoting, uh, I'd like you really to enlighten the viewers, because I, I, I somehow believe that Isa is not Jesus, and... Uh, uh, my last thing I want to say is I want to thank you very much, and I urge the viewers to contribute to your program. It is an absolute brilliant program. ABN, ABN delivers a great message, and uh, good, good night to you, gentlemen. Thank you, dear brother. Thank, thank you for you. calling. Once again, uh, talking about equivocating on terms, and, and, uh, and I guess even one thing, uh, the Muslims are very willing to allow the American people to be deceived. Oh, yeah, they and they terms. say, uh, you know, every year around Christmas time, you see, actually, the, uh, the, same, the same group, Hamas Linked Care, puts out an op-ed that is run in many American papers that says that uh, Muslims and Christians have more in common than you might think. Muslims res respect and revere Jesus. They believe in the virgin birth. They believe that he's the Messiah, various other things. And this is extraordinarily deceptive because your question focuses on a very important point. We know that Paul in 2 Corinthians, he upbraids the Corinthians for accepting another Jesus from the one that he had preached. Mm. He says, if someone comes to you with another Jesus from the one we have preached, you accept it readily enough. Right. And the Quran definitely presents another Jesus mm. from the one who is in the New Testament, who we know as the Son of God and the Savior of the world. The Jesus of the Quran is not the Son of God, not the Savior of the world, was not crucified on the cross, did not rise from the dead, was the word of God only in the sense of being born of a virgin as in the sense that he had no human father but Allah just said be and he is not in the word of God in the sense of sharing in the Godhead and being a member of the Trinity as a matter of fact uh, the the Quran warns Christians not to say three although it doesn't understand the Trinity properly and as it has there's even a place in chapter 5 in the Quran verses 112 to 116 where uh, Jesus appears before Allah, and Allah asks him, did you at tell your followers to take you and your mother as God's alongside me? Yeah. And Jesus says, oh, of course not. No, no, I, how far be it for me to say something I wasn't authorized to say. Mm. Uh, but actually, of course, we know that is not the trinity of Christianity, but it is yet another misunderstanding of Christianity that is enshrined within the Quran. In the Quran, in short, Jesus is presented as a Muslim prophet, as the precursor of Muhammad, there are, it, as, as Islam, as it developed, picked up elements of Christianity and incorporated them sort of undigested into the Quran and into Islamic tradition, there are numerous strange elements about the teaching about Jesus in the Quran. I mean, he's, he's presented in Islamic tradition as sinless. He's presented as coming back at the end of the world, although he's going to break all the crosses when he does and destroy Christianity and kill the Christians. But... Nonetheless, Muhammad doesn't come back at the end of the world. Muhammad is not presented as sinless. Muhammad is not presented as being born of a virgin. Muhammad is not presented as the word of God, however that is understood. Yeah. And so it's clear that there is something, even in the Quran, that still testifies to the special status of Jesus. And often, Muslims have been converted to Christianity by studying those passages and trying to understand what they mean. And they're led inevitably to Orthodox Christianity as a result. But the Quran, as it stands, has Jesus as a Muslim prophet who is the precursor to Muhammad, who prophesies in chapter 61, verse 6 of the Quran that Muhammad will be coming and will be the greatest prophet. And so it is not at all the uh, Jesus of the New Testament. And I think very applicable are the words in the first letter of John, anyone who does not have the Son does not have the Father. Uh, certainly in Islam in the Quran's repeated denials of the sonship of Christ and saying far be it from Allah's transcendent majesty that he should have a son as if it was some insult to him to have to suggest that makes it very clear that when Muslims talk about Jesus they are not talking about 
the Jesus whom Christians love. And they're doing the same thing, are they not, with the word jihad, especially since uh, we are in that first stage that you have pointed out more than once in our previous program where they're using deception, and what they're actually doing is fighting the jihad, and the only way that they continue to do it is by the stealth jihad and by the stamp of approval and the, and the green light, really, from our government and the media, and continuing to call... Uh, and, and this is very interesting, and we've got callers and, and, and a break uh, coming upon us, but Brother Robert, could you just comment on this, <laughs> this, this insanity, you know, this schizophrenia, uh, these Muslim terrorists, I mean, this is what the care and everybody would say, you know, these, or these terrorists, they're not real Muslims, they're not fighting jihad, yeah. right? I mean, uh, yeah. But, yeah, but this is jihad, you know, exercise. I mean, it, it's a schizophrenia. Yeah, and it's ridiculous, too, because no Muslim group yeah. anywhere in the world has made a declaration of takfir, mm. that is, of expulsion from the community, yeah. on the, on the uh, uh, people who believe like Osama bin Laden. Or and Al yet, yeah. we are expected to believe, as soon as any one of them comes yeah. up, oh, he wasn't a real Muslim. Yeah. Well, yeah. The, the, in other words, the way that you leave Islam, the way that you become a non-Muslim, is to act upon the teachings of Islam mm. in a way that embarrasses the other Muslims who are trying to deceive the kuffar. Yeah. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Well, uh, we only have a couple minutes before break. Would you like to make a point now, David? Take one more caller. What would you like? Uh, let's take another caller. Let's take one more caller before the break, and we'll come back, and then uh, I think you have some more to share on this. All right, uh, we have a lot of callers. Thanks for your patience. Let's take the next one right now. Welcome. You're on the air with ABN. Uh, hello, I'm on. Welcome. You're on. Go for it. Okay, well, this is actually Caleb. I've spoken with you guys before. Hey, how's actually, it going, brother? Nice. Welcome, oh, Caleb. it's going, man. Uh, how about y'all? How's it going, y'all? Yeah. Praise good, God. Good, good. Praise God. Okay, well, I, I just wanted to make a, a, a quick statement or two and then ask a question, okay? Uh, first, you can look in Second Peter 2, verse 1, and it, it really explains the, how the Muslims approach of, you know, denying the one who bought them, uh, mm. yet claiming they're preaching the message of Jesus. Mm. And... Uh, my, my question was, uh, people always uh, tell me, they feed me this uh, uh, line right here, all jihad was uh, back in that day. Well, it doesn't apply to the day. Well, what can I say to somebody that wants to Great, great that question. Well, the, That's always the, said. Go ahead. Yeah. The uh, Islamic sources <coughs> contradict that. I don't actually remember if it was in this program or in the last, but in either, either case, David made reference to uh, the chief justice of Saudi Arabia, Al Humaid, who uh, has written a very influential piece about the stages of development of jihad. And the stages of development of jihad, he didn't originate. They're, they go back to Ibn Ishaq, Muhammad's first biographer. And you can also find many other Islamic authorities throughout history saying that there was first tolerance, and then defensive jihad, and then offensive jihad. And so when these Muslims tell us now that the verses of jihad warfare only applied to Muhammad's day, that is flying in the face of a constant tradition that has been taught at the highest, by the highest authorities in Islam. It is also taught by Al-Azhar University in Cairo, which is the most prestigious and influential university in, in the Islamic world, and a, a, a revered authority on Sunni Islam. And of course, they get it from the Quran as well, Surah 2, Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 193, fight against them until... Until the uh, mean white Christian Americans <laughs> stop fighting us, right? No, until there is no more disorder and Allah's supremacy is established. Uh, and so, you know, the, the only time that the, the jihad is done is when there is no fitna, there is no disorder, there is no resistance, and essentially the whole world is Islamic. I mean, this is clear, and the whole world is not Islamic, so they will continue to fight until it is, or until the Lord returns. Yeah, and, and I'll add, for those Muslims who want to uh, try and reinterpret all of these things, uh, I'll say, if you tell me that fighting and jihad were just for Muhammad's time, you've just told me that Allah is the absolute worst communicator in all of history. <laughs> Because no one got he, that message. He is. No one that, got that, that message. That's, that's Quranic. He's yes. the Kheral Makarena. Yes. He's the people, greatest of all yeah, deceivers. People from yeah. Muhammad's time down to the present, there have been Muslims waging jihad. And guess what? If I ever came to believe that Islam is true, I would be out waging jihad. If I came to think this is the truth, I would say I have to follow it. And I know what Muhammad says. I know what Muhammad says about fighting. 
And I, and, 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 matter of fact, I'm willing to declare this right now. Robert Spencer, if I ever convert to Islam, hide, hide quickly. <laughs> yeah. Because I am coming <laughs> to <laughs> kill you. Right. I'm saying that, and I'm dead serious. This yeah, is what Islam. Absolutely. This I, is I'm what late Islam. For, uh, <laughs> sorry, gotta be going. This is this is this is what Islam commands. And if yeah, put it this absolutely. way, if Allah commands, O Prophet, strive hard against the unbelievers and the hypocrites, and be un, be unyielding to them. Right, talking to Muhammad there. But then turns to the believers, Surah nine, verse one twenty three. O you who believe, fight those of the unbelievers who are near to you, and let them find in you hardness. He's talking to the believers here. But you who believe, you fight. If Allah says that, and He doesn't come back later, and by the oh, by the way. I only mean now. I don't mean like 10 years from now. I only mean now. If that's what Allah meant and he just forgot to say that, well, you've got a problem because the Quran claims over and over again like a beating drum to be clear in its commands. When it commands you to do something, it is crystal clear. That's what the Quran claims. Brother David, you need to catch up with the times. That's an old Islamic apologetic argument. Now, according to Ahmed Rehab, that's not the argument. The argument is... Uh, al Nabi, Ya al Nabi. Oh, Prophet, uh, make the unbelievers that are around you lose weight. Mm -hmm. And and so this is the real meaning of jihad, not to fight. And so therefore, Muhammad maybe he was an aerobics leader. Uh, I don't know, maybe he was like a Thai bow guy or something. I don't know. But if you all you have to do, according to Pilates, really, <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Muhammad was the world's greatest Pilates instructor. You like Pilates, don't you? I Why mean, <laughs> <laughs> it's time to take a break, folks. We, we got, we've got a lot of callers, uh, but just that is true. I mean, if you yeah. take what Ahmed Rehab is saying, this verse means, Oh, Muhammad, cause the unbelievers to lose weight. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, this is absolute nonsense. Yeah. Cause the unbelievers to put on a fake mustache and a Groucho Marx face. You know, I mean, <laughs> this is it. That's jihad. That's jihad. <laughs> That's for jihad. You. All right. I know you got a lot of callers. I know you're waiting patiently. 248 416 The lines are open. We're going to come back. We're going to do our best we can to bring you the truth about Islam and, of course, exalt Jesus Christ and get your cause at the same time. It's going to be tough, but God will help us. And we look forward to you joining us right after this short. Praise God forevermore. Hey, are you enjoying this program? I certainly am. Muslims, I know you wanted to stop, but really, what, <laughs> we're relentless here because we're all about the truth. And the truth is, actually, the truth is a person, Jesus Christ. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. How different and how stark a contrast to Islam when Allah is the khair al-makarena, the greatest of all deceivers. And is this not exactly what we see right in our faces with Ahmed Rehab and, and this... And his cosmetics. Yeah. <laughs> It's cosmetics line. He, he <laughs> wishes. My <Jihad> cosmetics line. <laughs> hey. We should have all kinds of models. <laughs> with Ahmed, My Jihad. With lipstick. <laughs> Maybe you call in, Ahmed. Give us a call. 2 Fred 4 with 6 -1300. Love to hear from you. In the meantime, there's some callers that have been patiently waiting. Why don't we take the next one right now? Welcome. You're on the air with ABN. Uh, good evening. Good evening. Welcome. Uh, hi. First, I just want to say... Uh, I'm a big fan of David and Robert, uh, and thanks for the work you do, and greetings from Canada. Praise God. Hey. Oh, Canada. Um, uh, How's it going up there, eh? Hey. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that bad. Praise God. But uh, hey, I've got hey, two hey. quick questions. Hey, just, just so you know, we had a Muslim call in and threaten to kill us, <laughs> and Sam, Sam turned to us and said, I think he's from Canada because he said, uh, he said, uh, so you guys are talking about Muhammad, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Remember that? He, threatened, he said he was going to hang you us know, like, like they hung Jesus? You know, yeah. Canadians didn't care too much for George Washington. You know, so maybe this no, is... No, no, he's a good guy. He's a good guy. Oh, he's okay. Okay, good, okay. Good. all right. You can go ahead with all right, your question. Ahead, brother. All right, go ahead, brother. Well, I've got two quick questions here. Uh, uh, first question is to do with uh, Dawah, which, as you know, comes before the jihad. And... Um, I w went back home for Christmas. I moved uh, away from home about four months ago, but I went back home for Christmas, and I came back, and my my cousins gave me this uh, flyer, this huge fold-out. Mm -hmm. Apparently, there's an imam who's vicious and giving dawah up there, mm -hmm. this massive un that thing that unfolds that says, we love Jesus, oh, yeah. Islam means peace, sure. and uh, and all this other garbage. Gotcha. And... and <laughs> I just want to know how 
someone like me, I'm starting to study the Quran and Sira Rasulullah. How would I go about countering that specifically? And my second question is, I know that that Robert, about a year ago, he caught a guy on Fox named Mike Gauss engaging in the doctrine of Takia. I just want to know, is there any classical texts on the doctrine of Takia that the Muslims like to read? For example, like a, a, a classical text on the Trinity would be St. Augustine's book. Yeah. But uh, is there a classical text on Takia? That's brother, what I want to know. Brother, thank you so much. I'll answer the first question, then I'm going to give the second to Brother Robert and David. Uh, really, honestly, you know, me, Pastor Joseph, uh, I, where do I get my information? I learn from these guys. Jihadwatch.org, use it. AnsweringMuslims.com, use it. Uh, answering-islam.org Sam Shimon is a regular contributor use these websites I mean if you just take time to look at those websites you'll have all the ammunition that you need uh, Robert Spencer in his blog of course has his own commentary of Surah al Toba, Surah 9 chapter 9 where you find a lot of the jihad verses you can find more than enough ammunition at those three sites alone now the second question, brother. Uh, let, let me yeah. just let me let, let me add something to what you just said, uh, yeah. uh, brother. If someone's uh, handing out pamphlets and so on, I've made several pamphlets on what Islam teaches about uh, jihad, on on Christian topics, on Muslim topics, on uh, killing of apostates in Islam. And if you like those, I can send you PDFs. Go ahead and send me an email through your website, um, AnsweringMuslims.com. He can contact. Uh, you, right? you can find my. You, you can e he can email ABN and say, hey, okay. forward, forward this to David. Right. They'll, they'll, they'll forward it to me. Um, as for the second one, can yeah. we actually look at our, our, next, uh, yeah. our next slide? Because this ties into what we're going to talk about. If we're going to talk about Takiyah, this, this, this is number 328. So right. can our we, let's sign. take a look at our next sign. All right. My jihad is to build friendships across the aisle. My jihad <laughs> is yeah. to build friendships mm -hmm. across the aisle. Mm -hmm. So... What do we have here? Yeah. This person's jihad, and you see them, you see uh, uh, Muslims being friends there with non-Muslims. Uh -huh. And this is a form of jihad, because it, it, jihad is just striving or struggling against you know, something, you know, something that's a problem. So one of the problems is not enough, not enough friends in the world. Yeah. And so if we just fight against that, we struggle yeah. against that, yeah. then we'd all be friends and we'd all get along. Now, that, that's what Muhammad what's, preached. Yeah, what, what's, what's the problem with this? Well, this little thing called the Quran. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this little thing called the Quran, right. this little thing called the Muslim commentaries, yeah. uh, rail against this. So I'll, I'll talk about Surah 5, verse 51. Yeah, please. And then Robert can talk about 328, and that'll bring us right into the issue of Takiyah, which uh, the brother just asked us about. 551, make friends across the aisle, right? Yeah, that's what, Surah 551, you're going to see, this is going to, this is going to say, yeah. Jihad is making friends across the aisle. All right, let's hear. All right, Surah 5, verse 51. O you who believe, so this is talking to Muslims, mm -hmm. O you who believe, do not take the Jews and the Christians for friends. Mm -hmm. They are friends of each other. And whoever amongst you takes them for a friend, then surely he is one of them. Surely Allah does not guide the unjust people. That doesn't sound very friendly. Think about this. Don't be friends with Jews and Christians. Uh. They are friends with each other. If you take them for a friend, you're one of them. Hmm. In other words, if you take a Jew or a Christian for a friend, you're not really a Muslim. Why? Because Allah has commanded you not to take them for, right. for friends. Right. And if you do, in disobedience to right. Allah, then you've made them an idol. You've committed shirk. You've set them up as idols, and you've, uh, you've gone against Allah. You're mm. not a real Muslim. You mm. choose friends over obeying Allah, who's commanded you not to be friends with Jews and Christians, right? Right. Now, I want to point out some responses, because every Muslim who's watching right now, we know you're watching, even if you're not calling in. Yeah. Uh, every Muslim watching <laughs> this is thinking, has is, is been given the standard Western responses that all you have to do if, is read your sources, and you see are total nonsense. But uh, you're, 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 you're thinking right now, uh, no, but the word there, the word there is awliya. And it means protectors. Mm -hmm. Don't take them as protectors. I've seen this in almost every Muslim who responds to this. Yeah. It means protectors. First, think about what that would actually mean. Don't take Jews or Christians as protectors. What, like police officers? No Jews and Christians as, as police officers? <laughs> as doctors? <laughs> as politicians? Is that what it means? Is that what you want to tell your Western audience that this word actually means? <laughs> So what, what, do you, what do you mean when it says don't take Certainly them as protectors? Certainly not for elected office. Absolutely no, not. You can't. No. So, so, the, so the entire 
government needs to re be replaced by Muslims, yes. uh, according to that interpretation. They're, they're working on that. But second, way. it can't mean that. <laughs> and in fact, you Muslims who say that and actually mean it, those of you who say awliya means protectors, mm -hmm. you don't realize that you've just committed all kinds of shirk. <laughs> Why? Well, let me read you another verse that contains the exact same word, exact same tense, everything, right here. Surah 10, verse 62. Now surely the friends of Allah, they shall have no fear, nor shall they grieve. The awliya of Allah, they shall have no fear, nor shall they grieve. So wait, wow. aw awliya is normally translated as it is here, friends. Allah needs protection. So Allah has friends according to the Quran, no problem there, I don't have any theological problem with that. But now my Muslim friends tell me, actually this word means protectors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so wait a minute, Allah, you're telling me, there's mm -hmm. awliya of Allah, so Allah has human, this is yes. talking about human beings, right? Of course. Allah has human protectors, he has human bodyguards that guard him from harm. Well, he prays to Muhammad, that's one of yes, his protectors, that's right? right? Sallallahu alayhi wa Allah so, prays to Muhammad, he's one of his protectors. So Allah has human protectors. Yeah. So keep in mind, uh, here's Allah, and here are his bodyguards, who are obviously more powerful than him because they protect. That's, that's what that means if you want to translate that as protectors. But there's another problem, O oh, Muslims who don't bother to read your sources or understand your religion at all. According to Islam, mm. and, you know, Pastor Joseph Roberts, let me go ahead and ask, according to Islam, is a Muslim entitled to believe whatever he wants about any verse? Oh, sure. Or if Muhammad and his companions laid down their interpretation, are Muslims today bound by the interpretations of Muhammad and his companions? Of course. Right. Of course. They are bound. Yeah, they, they are. are they, so they, a Muslim they, today can't say, hey, Umar said, Umar, the rightly guided caliph, said a verse meant this, but I say it means something totally can't different. Happen. No. Can't. Muhammad said, my community will not agree on an error. If mm -hmm. there was consensus, Ujma, on anything in the past, then it's settled. It cannot be re revisited. Mm -hmm. and, and so the four schools of jihad also, I mean, of, uh, of Islamic jurisprudence, all would say that jihad is losing <coughs> weight or exercising, is that right? No, 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 no. Nary no. one would no. say no. that. Yeah. Yep. Oh. All right, now, so the, the, the point of bringing this up is this. We have the position of Muhammad's companions on this verse. <coughs> in fact, we have the position of one of the four rightly guided caliphs and one of Muhammad's closest companions on this verse. It goes back to Umar. Mm -hmm. So let me read you. This is in Ibn Kathir. Any Muslim out there, you don't have to trust me. Go to Ibn Kathir's commentary on Surah 5, verse 51. You can find it online, qtafsir.com. Go to the commentary on Surah 5, 51. Very easy to find. Let me okay. read it to you. Okay. So uh, he's commenting on, and if any among you befriends them, then surely he is one of them. And he comments. Ibn Abi Hatim recorded that Umar ordered Abu Musa al-Ashari to send him on one sheet of balance the count of what he took in and what he spent. So, give me your sort of financial records here. Abu Musa then had a Christian scribe, had a Christian scribe. Abu Musa, one of the great early Muslims. Abu Musa had a Christian scribe. Is he supposed to do that? What, what's the problem? And he was able to comply with Umar's demand. Umar liked what he saw. So, keep in mind what's going on here. You have Umar, you have Abu Musa. Abu Musa has a Christian scribe working with him, a scribe, just someone who writes, keeps his notes, keeps his records, and so on. And Umar asks for some records. Abu Musa gives them to him, written by a Christian scribe. And Umar likes what he sees. So Umar liked what he saw and exclaimed, this scribe is proficient. Would you read in the masjid a letter that came to us from Asham. So we, you're very good at reading. You're obviously well educated. Would you come to the mosque and read for us? Abu Musa said he cannot. Mm. Umar said, is he not pure? Abu Musa said, no, but he is a Christian. Mm. Abu Musa said, so Umar admonished me and poked my thigh, saying, drive him out from al Madina." Mm. He then recited, Oh, you who believe, take not the Jews and the Christians as friends. Ah. Is this a Christian who is fighting and attacking them? No, this is a Christian who's working for and them, accounting. doing the work of the Muslim community. And what was Umar's response? Not just, hey, you can't have him working for you. Get him out of the entire city. Why? Do not take the Jews and the Christians for friends. Let there be only one religion. So this, in is, this is Umar. 
This is one of the rightly guided caliphs, one of Muhammad's closest mm -hmm. companions, saying, you don't even have the Christian in your city if you had, you're going to have some kind of, you're at the risk of having some kind of relationship or friendship with the Christian. Get rid of him completely. Out. Expel him. So you Muslims who say, uh, my jihad is to make friends across the aisle, what religion are you following? Uh, what religion are you following? Are you following what the Quran says? No. Are you following the interpretations of Muhammad's companions? No. You're waging jihad against Muhammad's teachings. And there, I have to say, wow, I like your jihad. I love your jihad. Of course, David, the other shoe that drops in that case, as you well know, is that they are lying, and they know they're lying, and they are lying in the service of the jihad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah. that is, uh, of course, elucidated by chapter 3, verse 28 that I mentioned before, uh, which says, and I will read it word for word here, let not the believers take disbelievers as friends rather than believers. And whoever does that has nothing to do with Allah, except when taking precaution against them in prudence. And so now let's do exactly what David did, look at the commentaries on this. And this, of course, is the same word, the awliya, mm -hmm. a word that uh, is more than fr friends and somewhat less than protectors. And the key part of this, though, is that part about taking precaution or unless you have a fear of them. Mm -hmm. What is the exception here? You can't take unbelievers as friends unless you were doing it because you're afraid of them. Mm -hmm. Now this is the foundation of the idea that Muslims may legitimately deceive unbelievers when they're under pressure. And the, <coughs> the word here used is tukatan, yeah. which is where we get the word takiya, yeah. the verbal noun from tak takiyatan. Mm -hmm. And so the uh, commentary of Ibn Kathir on this verse says that this, that clause of it, unless you were doing it as a precaution or unless you were doing it because you have fear of them, means that believers who in some areas or times fear for their safety from the disbelievers may show friendship to the disbelievers outwardly, mm -hmm. but never inwardly. For instance, al-Bukhari recorded that Abd Abu Adarda said, we smile in the face of some people, as I quoted before, mm -hmm. but behind their backs, we curse them. And Abu Adarda was one of Muhammad's mm -hmm. companions. So here you have again, one of the companions of Muhammad saying this. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And al-Bukhari said that al-Hassan said, the taqiyah is allowed until the day of resurrection. Now, this is a very important point mm -hmm. because he does say that when they fear for their safety, from the disbelievers, they may do this. Mm -hmm. And you find many Islamic apologists today saying, oh, this is only something you can do when in grave peril for your life. Yeah. It's not just some license to lie at any time. Uh -huh. But uh, here again, words have different meanings in Islamic contexts from what they mean to American non-Muslims. And when a Muslim reads, if he fears for his safety from disbelievers, it is absolutely understood in general sense that that applies to anything that threatens Islam. And if Islam is being criticized mm -hmm. or denigrated, that is something that threatens the safety of the Muslim in particular and the Muslims in general. And so he has the responsibility, not just the, the privilege or the, the concession that he can lie in such a case, but he has the responsibility to do so to protect Islam. Any Muslim in Dar al-Harb, outside of the uh, House of Islam, mm -hmm for example, the United States, is always essentially given a carte blanche because he's in a state of spiritual war, but it is actually uh, manifest physically in that physical jihad because the Christians, obviously, he's in a country ruled by those who shouldn't be ruling him. Another thing that has to yeah. be emphasized about taqiyah when we're speaking about it is that you will often hear people say, well, this is something the Shiites do, right. but Sunnis don't do it. And Sunnis being okay. 85 to 90 percent of the Muslims worldwide it's nothing really to worry about. It's just these, uh, these crazy Iranians. Mm. But uh, in fact, we're talking about the Quran here. We're talking about the Quran that, as yeah. Pastor Joseph has quoted, sa it says Allah is the best of deceivers. Mm -hmm. And the Quran that tells people to, uh, not to take the, believer, the unbelievers as their friends unless they're doing it to protect themselves from them. And then they can deceive them. This is in the Sunni Quran as well as in the Shiite yeah. and has been practiced by the Sunnis throughout history. Certainly, the Shiites formulated a, a sophisticated and complex theology of deception that they formulated of necessity when they were being murdered wholesale by the Sunnis. But they certainly don't own the concept. 
and it is a universal Islamic concept. And, and I wanted to point out the, 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 what you quoted there, right? Yeah. You quoted the Quran. Mm -hmm. That's authoritative for Muslims. There's nothing that abrogates that anywhere. Um, you have Ibn Kathir. You quoted Ibn mm -hmm. Kathir's commentary, the greatest Islamic commentator of all time, <clears throat> who quoted Bukhari, mm -hmm. the greatest Hadith collector of all time, mm -hmm. who's quoting Al-Hassan, who's one of Muhammad's companions. How much stronger and can you get? And what, and, what, and, what, yeah, and, what, <laughs> and what did Al Hassan say? Taqiyya is allowed until the day of resurrection. That's a long time, right? So Sunnis, Sunnis who say, put it this way, there are two, there are two types of Sunnis, right? Yeah, yeah. As far as this issue. It yeah. could be one who is educated and knows what Islam teaches mm -hmm. and someone who's ignorant, right? Mm -hmm. We have the same thing here mm -hmm. in the West. Some Muslims know what Islam teaches. Some Muslims don't know what Islam teaches. As far as a Sunni Muslim who say, oh, it's just a Shia practice, only two, yeah. only, only two possibilities. Either he knows Islam, and he mm -hmm. knows what the commentaries say, and he knows what Muhammad's companions say, and yeah. he's actually engaging in taqiyya. Yes, yes. He's actually engaging in taqiyya when he's telling you taqiyya is only, only a Shia practice. Right. Or he just, he's absolutely clueless. And the question is, why would mm -hmm. you believe either one of them? Why right. would you believe someone who's clueless about his religion, or why would you believe someone who's deliberately trying to deceive you practicing this deception. So think about what you have here. And notice, notice the Italian, Surah 551. Don't be friends with Jews and Christians. If you do, you're one of them. Right. In other words, you're not a real Muslim. Right. 330, I mean, 328 said the same thing. Let not the believers take disbelievers for their friends in preference to believers. Whoso doeth that hath no connection with Allah. Mm -hmm. You have no connection with Allah. Right. You're not a real Muslim. Why? Because Allah told you not to be friends with him, and you are. So you're putting them above Allah. Except if you're trying to deceive them because you're worried that they pose some threat to Islam, then you can deceive them. Then you can deceive them, and that's what the commentaries say. So, <laughs> my jihad is to make friends across the aisle. Yeah. Two possibilities here that are, same, that are the same kind of possibility. It is actual with the Sunnis, jihad. Right? Yeah. <laughs> if this was written by a Muslim who knows what the Quran says, knows what the Hadith say, knows what's in the commentaries, has some basic knowledge of what Islam teaches, that person knows Islam does not allow me to make true friends. It, with non-believers. It does not allow me to be genuine, genuine friends with the Kufar or with Christians or with Jews. It specifically tells me not to. So either the Muslim knows what the Muslim sources teach and he or she is practicing taqiyya by claiming that Islam promotes friendship with unbelievers, or it is a Muslim who has no clue what Islam teaches, <coughs> is so ignorant of Islam, they're spouting total nonsense and they don't really even realize it. And either way, why are you listening to A, a person who's deceiving you, or B, a person who's totally ignorant of Islam, and yet these are the people that the media bows down to and says, well, we'll believe whatever you say. Which, in <laughs> fact, Brother David, as you pointed out, uh, the first option, he is, in fact, fighting in that first state of jihad. Oh, if, yeah. in fact, he's deceiving, that is a, a valid jihad. And, you know, we've already established, sort of 2193, there is a war, there is a fight until the... Until all of the world is Islamic, or until the day of resurrection. We have the Hadith, we have the Quran, we have Muhammad saying war is deceit. There's a constant war, Dar al Harb, Dar al Islam. And so in Dar al Harb, taqiyya is should always theologically be allowed by the Muslim. I mean, it just it makes sense, and that's what we see. Well, that's what uh, Bukhari said, yeah. quoting Hassan, that uh, taqiyya is allowed to the day of resurrection. Yeah. And of course it should because there's always war in mm -hmm. Islam until all of, and of course, you know, yeah, exactly. And we see time and time again, as you say, pawned off on the Shia or deceived. But even the deception about the deception is itself jihad. Mm -hmm. On that note, why don't we try to take one caller before our last break of the evening. Let's take the next caller right now. Welcome, you're on the air with ABN. Hello, uh, it's Lewis here. Welcome. Hey, Lewis, what's up? Hey. It's doing all right. Um, I'm still at doing what I'm doing up here in Canada. A lot, of Cana a lot of Canadians calling tonight. What's up with that? Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know what? Islam's no a big problem up tonight. here, so no. we benefit a lot from what you're doing down there as well. Grateful. Anyway, um, <laughs> I have a comment. It's about what Islam and its sources teach as opposed to what individual Muslims believe. Because... As you know, you know, I'm totally with you guys. I, t I really agree with you that Islam, as defined by the Quran and the Sunnah and all the other sources, is warlike, belligerent, and uh, inhumane. Now, that, be and that being said, there, I do encounter, um, how to say this, um, most of the Muslims that I encounter are, of course, the westernized uh, liberal type who believe that it's the religion of peace. Yeah. And 
obviously there are going to be some of them who are practicing taqiyya. They know how Islam really is. But by and large, most of the Muslims that I encounter, uh, especially in the university where I study, um, they really do believe the stuff about Islam being a religion of peace, you know. Mm-hmm. Those um, stupid-looking bus ads in Chicago, uh, my suspicion is that uh, a lot of the Muslims here, if they saw that, they would say, yeah, that's what we believe, that's what mm-hmm. we think. They, that it really reflects what, they, what, what their attitude is towards uh, me and uh, Westerners. And I do, have no doubt that most of the Muslims who befriend me really do want my friendship. So, well, so you know, your question, brother, uh, we, um, we hear what you're saying. Well, they're just nice guys. Yeah. You know, um, not all Christians thing. love their enemies and turn the other cheek, but that doesn't mean that Jesus didn't say to do it. Mm-hmm. And uh, there, there are millions of Muslims who don't live up to the teachings of their religion. And for that, we can be grateful. Thank God. A bad Muslim is a religion. good Muslim. Uh, <laughs> the thing is, is that we have to remember that if most Muslims today are not Arabs. And yet mm-hmm, Islam right. is an intrinsically Arabic religion yeah. where they have to pray in Arabic, they have to read Quran in Arabic. I had a Pakistani uh, guy tell me in all seriousness once, he said, I'm very proud of my religion and I have memorized almost all of the Quran and one day I plan to get one of those translations and find out what it means. <laughs> he didn't have a clue, he was mouthing syllables yeah. and he would believe about Islam what the Imams told him. So if he had these Chicago people telling him jihad <coughs> is romping through the daisies, and playing skip rope, then that's what he thought. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, and, and, and by, 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 by the by the way, uh, Lewis. Uh, and yeah, we'll, we'll let you we'll let you uh, uh, we'll let you continue. I just want to say, I, I I agree completely. I agree completely with with your point. Um, I, I, I most of the Muslims I know as well are very peaceful, uh, very peaceful people. I don't think they're trying to subjugate me. Um, but I I, I agree completely. Uh, with Robert, and the idea here is that there's more influences on a person than just the person's religion, right? So, th- so each person is, 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 has all kinds of influences on the person, right? Just, I mean, from the beginning, your genetics. Uh, some people are just very aggressive by nature. They're born more aggressive than, than uh, you know, another child who is very, very timid by nature. Um, different people have different uh, parents. Some parents do a great job raising their kids. Some parents do a horrible job raising their kids. People are influenced by their education, their teachers, music, television, uh, just the values in general, the things we people in general condemn, the things in general people praise. So there are all kinds of influences on people. Religion is just one. That's true for a Christian. That's true for a Muslim. Re- re- and you know, depending on how important it is to you, it can either be a massive influence, the most important influence, or it can be uh, a minor influence. For lots of people, whether they're Christian or, or, or Muslim, uh, the religion is a very minor influence on them, and that's why you have you know, Christians who behave the same as Muslims, who behave the same as an atheist, right? Uh, they've absorbed the same values. Um, it's when people actually take this religion as the most important thing in their life, and they try to do so accurately, that's what would concern me about Islam. Because when you say, as a Muslim, you know, hey, I need to, I need to quit doing what I'm doing. I've been living my life. I've been living my life like Allah is, is 50th on, on, on my importance list. Well, I need to do, I need to be a good Muslim. I need to obey the Quran, Surah 3321, which puts Muhammad as the ultimate moral example. How am I supposed to find out what example Muhammad set? Well, I, I need to read not only the Quran, I need to read the Hadith as well. I need to find out how Muhammad lived, and I need to imitate that. Yeah. And that's when you get problems. And, and really, I think that the, the politicians and the media in, in, in the West, it's kind of a big gamble. And the gamble is no Muslims are ever going to take Islam seriously, so don't worry about it. Because happened, if people uh, are actually going to take Islam seriously, then we should really be, take, we should really be looking this at This exactly Bible. what David is saying happened with the Lackawanna Six. Six young Muslims who were completely secular, who were drinking, who were living with their girlfriends, who were indistinguishable from many, many Americans of, their, of the same age. And then this uh, Wahhabi uh, preacher came to their mosque and he befriended them and he would play basketball with them and... Mm. They would have pizza parties and read the Quran. That was his jihad. He, that was his jihad. <laughs> yeah. He brought them to the realization that they were living sinful lives and that they were going to burn in hell forever and be drinking molten lead in hell forever and have their skins burnt off and get new skins to get burnt off again. And he scared them into realizing that they had to put Allah first in their lives and live as pious Muslims. And they ended up trying to join jihad terror groups. Yeah. And now they're in prison. Mm. Brother Lewis, I'm sorry, we have to go to a break, but before we do, uh, 
it's so, so crucial and so simple, yet so difficult to distinguish Islam and Muslims. And this is the problem we're always having. This is the problem of everyone who has ever had an issue. You say, you know, look, Islam is inherently evil. Yeah, but Muslims aren't bad people. I mean, how many times have you heard that? Oh, and, about and they, 10 a day. <laughs> and they cannot divorce that. And in our government, Islam is a wonderful religion. So therefore, these people who do these things cannot be Muslims. The whole key is you must be able to divorce in your mind. Islam is a spirit. It is an evil spirit. It is the spirit of anti-Christ. It is completely, thoroughly against Christ. And the person is separate from that, especially these liberal, uh, not-so-good Muslims. But the closer they come to that spirit, the more that spirit possesses them, the more and more they will act like Muhammad, the more and more they will act against Christ and act out. Thank God. A bad Muslim is a good Muslim. A good Muslim is a bad Muslim. But the problem is Islam. The problem is not the people. And that is why we're in the business of not just exposing Islam, but exposing Muslims to the Son, the Son, Jesus Christ, who alone can convert them. You see, Br Brother Robert has on his blog every day, Americans who were some sort of Christian nominal, they become Muslims. What do they do? They want to blow up a bank. They want to burn down buildings. They want to go to Afghanistan. They don't want to go, the they don't want to, go to Bali? <laughs> I don't know. That, that's coming in Chicago only. But, but this idea, how many Muslims have you ever heard that, that convert to Christianity, that commit a terrorist act? Ever. I've never heard of one It's incident. amazing how many Muslim converts misunderstand their new peaceful, tolerant religion. Yeah. And yet converts to Christianity never seem to misunderstand it in that way. It's such a strange conundrum. Yeah. Uh, Allah just wasn't clear enough in his, in his perfectly clear book. <laughs> some things are clear, some things are not quite as clear. They're allegorical. Don't ask questions. Don't ask he questions. wanted to say, go exercise at Bally's, but it came out, fight the unbeliever. <laughs> <laughs> it came out, it came out all wrong. Allah's got a strange speech impediment that uh, it, it, th that That was one of the seven versions that didn't yes. get preserved. <laughs> all right, let's take a break. We'll be back with the last segment of our program and your calls right here live on ABN. All right, praise the Lord. Welcome back to our program. Here we are live with Robert Spencer, David Wood, and you, our dear viewers. Remember that ABN is supported by your prayers and your giving. So please pray about what the Lord would have you to do to, may, to enable us to continue to produce quality programs like the one you're watching right now. We're talking about my jihad. Hey, my jihad is to lose weight. What's yours? We have more placards to look at, don't we? Uh, and some more things to say because we were out of time and we've got callers. Did you want to put up some more? Uh, pictures or are we done with the JP? I'm fine either way. We can talk about more pictures. Do we have some of some Robert's? Did, did Robert's get up the ones that he's going to do? If you, if you, if you want to just go through the last three real quick, yeah. we'll comment briefly on each one of them. Yeah. Right, if yeah. We could, yeah if we, technicians, if we could go through those last three pictures that we had, uh, the different signs, we'll make a few yeah, comments we'll, on those. Yeah, put each one up, we'll comment on it briefly yeah. and go to the next one. Yeah, All right, what's our next uh, picture? My jihad is to always pursue new ideas and conquer new challenges. That's innovation. Innovation. And new innovation. ideas are forbidden. That's uh, yeah. bidah. Mm. It's a bad thing in Islam. As uh, George Washington said in the last episode here, yes. uh, the, part of the message of Islam is Allah wants you to live and act and think and dress like, like a 7th century Arabia. Arab. Right? Yes. Yes. This is, if, if, if you look at, say, the difference between Christianity, Christianity yeah. is what you might call principle-based. Yeah. It tells you principles to live by. You can adopt those principles in, in, in any, Outer space. In any yeah. culture, right? Yeah. So the principle would be, do unto others as you would have them do unto you, okay. right? Um, and it, you, can put, you can be in any situation. Ah, I wonder if I should steal. Well, would I want someone doing that to me? No, I shouldn't. No, right. I, I shouldn't do it, right? right. Islam is rule-based. You have mm -hmm. to be given a rule for everything. Yes. Muslims literally do not know how to go to the bathroom right. unless Muhammad told them an odd number no. of stones yeah <laughs> you're told you you you're you told you have to step it you have to step in with this foot you have to walk out with this foot first you have to wipe with this certain number of stones you're told exactly how to do it you're supposed to by the way guys you're supposed to pee sitting down just because muhammad did yeah. peed yeah. like a girl because um, jinn live in the water That's yeah right. so so you are you have to you have to be told everything it's rule based and if we don't have a rule we don't know what to do right. we don't know what to do right and so Muslims have been given all these rules. The problem is all these rules are tied towards 7th century Arab culture and practice, yes. the, the culture and practice of Muhammad and his tribe and his companions. And so all these rules about how you're supposed to live are tied to 7th century Arabia. 
that has caused Islamic culture to stagnate. Mm -hmm. And then someone comes along, oh, we're all about new ideas. Sure. Really? Your prophet wasn't. <laughs> the only time they got them is when they stole them by jihad, uh, by expansion. From but notice, notice we, 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 we said this earlier about how um, ignorance allows Muslims to come in here and say whatever they want, right? Sure. Oh, it's all about friendship. Really? Not what the Quran says. It's all about new ideas. That, your, <coughs> that, your prophet said that'll send you to hell. That's innovation. Uh, but this is what Islam is about. Why? Because they're ta these, are our, these are the values that we have in America. Mm -hmm. And so we want Islam is the same. And that's why we can say that Muhammad is like George Washington, because we look up to George Washington. Well, say anything you want, as long as people are going to like it. Well, Barack Hussein Obama. A few years Obama back, it was popular to say that uh, Muhammad had formulated the first constitution yeah. and the first republic <laughs> uh, with his covenant with the Jews. I've they didn't that. mention, of course, that he exiled two of the Jewish tribes and massacred the third, mm. and then massacred the remnants at Kaibar, yeah. and that the Muslims still chant the jihadis, Kaibar, Kaibar, Ya Yahud, uh, Kaibar, Kaibar, O oh Jews, the army of Muhammad will return. Jesh and Muhammad so, uh, bin Sayyid Sa Sa yeah, Sa yeah, will rise again. Yeah. And yeah. so uh, this is... Uh, <clears throat> Just as absurd, but it was actually posited. It, uh, there was uh, there was a Muslim questioner when when President Bush, uh, George W. went to Johns Hopkins University and he was speaking to a group. Uh, a Muslim student got up and he said, uh, "You are uh, pursuing democracy in Iraq and Afghanistan. And, uh, are you aware that Muhammad formulated the first constitution? And uh, are you going to implement that model in Iraq and Afghanistan?" And of course, Bush took it completely seriously because he was the prototypical ignorant American who did not know when he was being played for a fool by these deceptive Muslims. But in reality, th there was nothing like a Republican government mm -hmm. in Medina. There was no uh, democracy. There was no equality of rights for the non-Muslims. And these things have never been principles within Islam. And yet, here again, what David is saying is uh, that they are trying to make Islam palatable to Americans by making it appear to enshrine the values that Americans hold dear, not only first, but better than Americans have been able to embody them by their living out their own principles. Interestingly enough, and we have uh, at least two more calls we want to try to get before the end of the show, but Ahmed Rehab's uh, foolishness here, I mean, his cosmetics. Would, his cosmetics, you would think that at least he would mention, well, okay. There, there, there is a jihad that is warlike, but that's the lesser jihad. But, 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 but what he's presenting is that no, there is no violent jihad at all. Yes. And this is what he wants Americans to think. Zahra Balu actually said that. Zahra Balu is uh, with the uh, uh, San Francisco, I believe it is. But in any case, one of the California chapters of the Hamas-linked Council on American-Islamic Relations. And Zahra Balu actually said that to a California paper. Uh, in their, oh, it must have been San Francisco, yeah, mm. because that's where the ads are running. Mm. Uh, in, in one of these glowing stories about the My Jihad campaign in San Francisco, Zahra Balu says it's a misconception that jihad has anything to do with warfare and violence. Nothing at all to do with it. Nothing. At all. So yeah. that means Muhammad didn't understand jihad. Yeah. Well, well, well you know, real, I mean, real quickly, uh, Surah 973. Uh, sort of nine one. You want two. me to read it? Yeah, please. I mean, because we have to understand. Well, let, what let, it let, means. let me let me. Uh, nine seventy three. Okay, we'll, we'll go with nine seventy three, and I'll and I'll read a, a hadith as well. Oh, yeah. prophets, strive hard against who? Against people who are attacking you? <laughs> no, no, now wait no, a minute. No. Make sure the people know that this word in Arabic is jihad. This mm -hmm. this is a, a verbal form of of jihad. So this is the word mm -hmm. jihad in Arabic. It's translated to English, and it says what? Again? Yeah, yeah. Well, well, yeah. Quote a couple of passages briefly. Uh, oh, prophets, strive hard against. People who are attacking you? Mm -hmm. Unbelievers. No. Supporting Strive Israel? hard against <laughs> yes, the definitely. unbelievers and the hypocrites. Uh -huh. Notice, the unbelievers, <clears throat> these are the people who don't believe in Islam, right. and the hypocrites, these are people who claim to be Muslims and aren't living up to Muhammad's standards. So you're supposed to fight your fellow Muslims if they're not, <laughs> if they're not lining up. Again, if they're not lining up with Islam. We already saw, if you're not fighting jihad, you're one of the hypocrites. Right. If you're not waging war against the unbeliever, you're one of the hypocrites. Well, now, why would he translate it as wage war? Why would you translate jihad as wage war if it has absolutely nothing to do with violent warfare? Well, it's clear from the context in every mention of it in the Quran, as well as in the Hadith, that as, as, as David has quoted some of them, that you know you have the marks on you, you have the blood, I, I, there's spoils of war, chapter 8 of the Quran, Al-Anfal. Al How can you have spoils of war yeah. from a spiritual struggle? Yeah. Yeah. And even, uh, even, even uh, uh, over and over again in Surah 9, you have these commands to fight. You have these commands to fight. And the type of fighting is defined explicitly in Surah 9, verse 111. With your person, yeah, in with context, your body. Right? Surely Allah has bought 
of the believers, their persons and their property for this, that they shall have the garden. They fight in Allah's way. Well, what is fighting in Allah's way? They fight in Allah's way, so they slay and are slain. They slay and are slain. That's the type of fighting that we're talking about in context in Surah 9. And Muhammad said in Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih Muslim, I've been commanded to fight people until they say, La ilaha illallah. What's that? I, I've been told to fight people until they quit attacking me? No, I've been told <laughs> to, keep, to fight them until they recite the Shahada. This is very clear. <coughs> a five-year-old could understand this, and yet you take all of our politicians, all of our media representatives, they look at them, I don't know what it means. And they persecute. I'd say it means friendship. And they persecute uh, Robert Spencer, David Wood, and others. How dare you quote Muhammad on Islam? <laughs> For, for you can only quote the Muslim who lives down the street and has no clue what he's talking about. That's the only person you're allowed to quote on Islam. Or the person over there is trying to deceive you. Those are the, only, those are the authorities in Islam. Deceptive people and people who are totally ignorant. But, but under, no circumstances, under no circumstances are Muhammad and the Quran and if you good quote sources them, on Islam. Then you're immediately accused of hate and bigotry. I recently had a very interesting uh, <coughs> exchange with a Muslim writer, Linda Sarsour, oh, yeah. who works closely with Hamas Linked Care. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, she was quoting, she, she was referring to Jesus mm -hmm. in a tweet yeah. and said, Jesus uh, did this and this, so you ought to as well. Mm -hmm. And I wrote back, that's interesting. What are your sources for uh, material about what Jesus said and did? Yeah. And she wrote back, uh, what are you, stupid? Is the Bible and the Quran. Yeah. And I said, so you're, you're, you, you reject the Islamic idea that the Bible's been corrupted? Yeah. And she said, it's not an Islamic idea that the Bible's been corrupted. I see. So I sent her some quotes from Muhammad saying that the Bible has been corrupted, mm. some quotes from the Quran suggesting that the Jews and the Christians have tampered with their scriptures, and she wrote back that she wasn't going to be involved with my hatred and bigotry. <laughs> well, you are That's as easy as how it phone. always works. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Want to look at these last two slides real quick? Uh, yes, we have two callers, but let's do the slides and then let's end with the callers. All right, uh, yeah. next slide. There we go. Jihad an Islamic concept that means to struggle against barriers and odds in search of a better place. <laughs> now, is, th is that what Banu Kanuka and Banu Nadir had? You know, they were able to go to a better place when Muhammad kicked them out of Medina. Yeah. That well, was I jihad. think they, that <laughs> as far as Muhammad was concerned, uh, at least the Banu Qurayza went to a better place when <laughs> yeah. he cut all of all their heads. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, <laughs> I, I, have, I have to agree here if you, um, because you have different types of deception and Islam, right? Mm -hmm. One of them is to use words in a certain way yeah. where you know what you mean and you're speaking truthfully, mm. but you know people are mm -hmm. going to misinterpret it and sure. they're going to understand it in a different way sure. and you allow them to believe falsely what well, you mean. Lying. If you say that you believe that jihad is overcoming obstacles to get to a better place, absolutely. A Muslim can say that. A, a, a knowledgeable Muslim can say that because, sure. wait a minute, uh, my, the it better is. place I want to get to is Jannah and get my sure. virgins in paradise. That's the better place I want to get to. The obstacle are all these unbelievers right. that are in my way that I'm commanded to fight, and therefore I'm going to overcome these <coughs> obstacles and I'm going to get to the better place. Or alternately, the better place could be the Sharia state that is imposed by force of arms, and the obstacles are the non-believers who want to have a state that is not governed by Islamic law. Absolutely. Right. And right. under no circumstances is it a harmonious society of equals. Mm. Muhammad, once he got power, uh, when he was on his way to power, told mm. his companion Umar um, that he's going to expel the Jews and Christians from the Arabian Peninsula and not leave any but Muslims. Right. This is not a person right. who, who envisioned a, a society of equals. Well, let's get to the last slide because this is actually uh, Robert slide. and Pamela's uh, Let's take a look uh, at what ad. they're doing. They've got a response. Go ahead. Yes. What do that's you guys the, think? Uh, what do you guys think in here, Robert? What, what you... That's a parody mock-up. The ads are not yet running. We still hope that they will be running. But uh, what we wanted to do was actually tell the truth about Islam and jihad. And so we uh, developed a series of ads that actual contain actual quotes from actual Muslims who were waging jihad. Yeah. That quote, the first thing that we are calling you to is Islam, is from Osama bin Laden's letter to the American people from October 2002, in which he explained why Al-Qaeda took down the Twin Towers, which mm. you can see on the right. Mm. And he explained that what we are doing by destroying these buildings and killing these people, it was to uh, wage a jihad in order to bring you to Islam and to bring the Islamic State to the United States, to replacing the Constitution, supplanting American principles, subjugating the Jews and the Christians under the rule of the Muslims. Yeah. 
Yeah. Now, that's very strange because that sounds like exactly what I read in the Muslim sources. <laughs> well, and enough. Muslims are telling us that has nothing to do with jihad. That's got nothing to do with it. He's twisted and hijacked. And all of this yeah. nonsense about making friends and getting some exercise <laughs> that has nothing to do with jihad and is often diametrically opposed to what Islam teaches yeah. on the issue of friends. That's what real Islam is. Well, as I you feel both, like I'm in opposite world. As this you is have bizarro both, Islam. <laughs> <laughs> as you both have pointed out many times, the left and, uh, of course, these uh, is, uh, Muslim uh, stealth jihadists like care uh, have no end to poking at you guys and saying, hey, you're just like Osama bin Laden. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, you, your views of Islam are exactly like the ones who brought down the Twin That's Towers. That's a very common hamas linked care talking point these yeah. days, that they say that... Uh, the, the, we're fighting, actually, actually uh, Ahmed Rehab, in his, one of his cosmetic interviews about this, mm. he said that uh, we're fighting extremists on both sides. That's right. We're fighting against Osama bin Laden on the one side and Pamela Geller on the other. Yeah. Now, you know, yeah. I've worked with Pamela Geller for many years, and I don't recall her ever flying planes into buildings or ordering anybody to do so. The, the comparison is absurd, and it is odious, but it is for a purpose. It is designed to, uh, to lump together and thereby discredit those who are trying to resist right. the jihad right. as if they were the same as those who are pursuing the jihad. And of course, the only reason to do that would be to help that jihad advance. We have a couple of callers who've been waiting quite a bit. Uh, so let's see if we can get to these last two callers in our last few minutes. Uh, please do be uh, brief. <coughs> Dear caller, you're on the air. Go right ahead. Hello? Hello, Ronnie. You're on the air. Go right ahead. Hello, Pastor Joseph. How are you? I'm well, brother. Thank you for calling. You only have a little bit of time, so you go ahead and state what you'd like. Okay. Well, my uh, God, God bless all of you. Um, I just wanted to ask something. Um, I, the question is, basically, is the Taliban's view on women not becoming educated an extreme Islamic view, or is it the true universal Islamic view? I ask this question because of the... You know, the the uh, recent shooting of that young, uh, you know, Muslim woman that wanted to get, uh, you know, women more educated. Right. That's a great question. I don't know the answer. Robert, Brother Robert, uh, Brother David? Well, of course, women are completely <clears throat> subjugated in Islam and are essentially possessions of men. But that has allowed for some variation in this, uh, in this question. Because if a man wants his wife to be educated or his daughters to be educated, then traditionally that has been allowed. But the Taliban are uh, pursuing a hardline view of that. I wouldn't think, I don't know, maybe you, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't know that that's a universal mm -hmm. in this. Mm -hmm. uh, they are uh, certainly on firm ground in terms of saying that women should be uh, uh, subservient to their husbands and slaves to their husbands and subject to them in every way. But that does seem to not take into account what has traditionally prevailed in most Islamic societies, which is that the women were educated if it was something that was in accord with the husband's wishes or the father's. Yeah, and I, I, I would, uh, uh, I, I agree with all of that. Mm. Um, but you, ha you have, uh, we, in Islam, you have different sort of sources of Islamic right. law or Sharia. Sure. And the main source is, of course, the Quran and Muhammad's mm -hmm. commands in, in the Hadith. Yes. You also have uh, consensus of scholars, or consensus yes. of the Muslim community and so on. Uh, but you also have this principle. Um, it's, 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 it's of lesser importance than, mm -hmm. say, the Quran or the Hadith, but sure. if it's good for the Islamic community, if it's mm -hmm. something that's good, something that you conclude is good for the Islamic community, and it's not in conflict with, yeah. with what is declared in the Quran and the Hadith, you can, you can apply that. Mm -hmm. And so if you are, uh, if you are the Taliban, yeah. uh, let, let's, let me just quote one passage, and, and there are all kinds of passages like this. Uh, Jamiat Termini, by the way, Basim said we could go over, so we're not... <laughs> It's not an emergency. Jami at Termini 964. Um, Allah's messenger was asked which woman was best. He replied, the one who pleases her husband when he looks at her, obeys him when he gives a command, and does not go against his wishes regarding her person or property by doing anything of which he disapproves. Mm. So the principle, if you're someone like the Taliban, yeah. we, are, we are told women have to be in total subjection to yeah. their husbands, totally obedient to their husbands. If they go out and get educated, mm -hmm. they might learn some things that will conflict with that. Right. And so it's okay for us to make rules against them getting educated, and, and yeah. to, to go out and wage <coughs> jihad in order to enforce that, that they are not to go out and get educated because they are not going to be good Muslim women. Right. It's kind of analogous to the niqab and the burqa. Yeah. Uh, Muhammad said that a woman should cover everything but her face and hands. 
But the principle behind that is that it's the woman's responsibility to make sure that the man doesn't get tempted. The man has no responsibility for self-control. Mm. And so the niqab and the burqa covering the face, covering the eyes, I mean covering everything but the eyes or covering the face altogether, that is working out the same principle. That if it's the woman's responsibility to keep the man from getting tempted, then she has to cover up even more yeah. than what Muhammad said explicitly. All right, thank you. Thank you for your call. We've got one more caller tonight. Let's take the next caller right now. Welcome, you're on the air with ABN. Hello, caller, are you there? Is that, is that me? Yes, welcome, you're on the air. Go right ahead. Oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, thank you, gentlemen. You're doing a great show. Uh, about the billboards and the deception, I have an, uh, just a small example. Okay. I do watch that uh, Guy Does TV. And actually, I watch it. Yeah, I watch it sometimes as a as a comedy show when there's no other comedy shows on TV. <laughs> so, uh, and this was around Christmas time. Uh, there's uh, this Imam Kareem Abu Zaid. I think he's Imam of Denver, Colorado, mm -hmm. and he's supposed to be a moderate. And he was taking questions, and one of the uh, listeners called him, and he says, "Is it okay to say Merry Christmas to my friend?" And, uh, and Imam Karim Abu Zaid said, La hiya akhilah. No, you can't do that. You can't say Merry Christmas. Then you're, you know, then, then it's like you're, uh, uh, you know, becoming like a Christian or something. This is against uh, Islam. You're not supposed to say Merry Christmas. Mm, mm, mm. So, so what happened to that uh, jihad is to build friendship across the <laughs> aisle. <thing. laughs> it's nothing but hypocrisy, absolute hypocrisy. Yeah. Oh, and, and, and good example. And, and, Thank and, you, brother. And by the way, it, I, yeah. I, I, I think a, I think a Muslim actually could practicing takia, go based on the Muslim sources. I think a Muslim practicing takia could actually say Merry, Merry Christmas as, yeah. as long as he understands uh, what he's doing. Because well, I mean, you, not, you, not you, 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 no, no, no. You can, you can, in certain situations, you can even deny that you're a Muslim. You can say, I'm not a Muslim. I don't believe in Muhammad. I don't care about him. Yeah. You can do that in certain situations as a Muslim. So. Um, well, I think that's in certain the, situations, that's the I think what they're saying again. is, you know, yeah. you Muslims out there, you're not in any danger and stuff. Don't do that. Don't, yeah. You're, you're, yeah. Bad news. Yeah, chapter 16, verse 106 what? of the Quran allows for, uh, it completely what? overturns the Christian idea of martyrdom mm. and says that if you're in danger or fear of death, then you can deny, deny your faith. Right. Anybody who denies his faith will go straight to hell unless he's doing it because he's in severe danger. Mm. Thank you, brother. We're out of time. Thank you so much for calling. And thank you all, dear callers. Uh, and uh, we are out of time, but, but before we do close off here, I'd just like to say any closing uh, arguments, if you will, from the both of you, and then we'll end. Uh, well, I, I, I want to point out uh, to viewers out there that what we're doing right here, you can do that, right? This, you, you don't have to be a genius to look at what's in the Muslim sources. This can be the and, jihad too. Yeah, to, to, to look at what's in the Quran, to learn some of these basic verses. And we, we, we quote the, a lot of the same passages over and over again because they're the ones <laughs> that refute uh, the, what, we're, what we're up against. Yeah. Uh, but some of these passages in the Quran, some of these passages in the Hadith, uh, any of you out there can do this. And if you're watching this show, I'm hoping many, many of you are interested in responding to what's going on. And I have to say, uh, you, you can't have Robert Spencer stand against what he's standing against and think that he's going to be successful when it's he's standing against uh, all of the mainstream media all politicians and so on i'll tell you robert's going to stand no matter what that's what he's going to do um but as far as actually winning this this battle of information this ideological battle people have to get involved people have to get involved people have to learn this and uh, we pointed it out earlier the only way to stop this level of deception, this we'll just say whatever we want about Islam and uh, get away with it, the only way to confront that is for facts about Islam and Muhammad to become common knowledge. And that means people in general have to learn certain things about Muhammad. You don't have to mem memorize the Quran, don't have to memorize the Hadith, but people in general should be informed about uh, some of the main issues. And once we do that... You're not going to see absolute nonsense like we see in the Huffington Post or on, or on bus ads. Thank you, Brother David. Brother Robert. Yes, you can do this. You should do this. And you must do this. Because if we do not stand for the truth, then the lies will prevail. Mm. And the consequences of that will be far more severe than any of us imagine. Mm. And so I hope that you will all join us. And I look forward to watching your programs. Please, uh, please do go, if you haven't before, to jihadwatch.org. Also, answeringmuslims.com, David Wood, 
And, of course, Brother Sam Shimon, uh, we hoped he had been with us tonight. But, uh, anyways, go to answering-islam.org. If you want to be a Christian apologist to Islam, if you read every page of answering-islam.org and memorize it and study it, You'll be hot shot. You'll you give David Wood a run for his you will. You will destroy me. You uh, will. I, I mean, if I you long, read all of it, it's amazing. I long for the day when I can learn the material in Sam Shimon's articles. <laughs> it's but, uh, prolific. Yeah. Hey, folks, thank you so much for watching. Remember, uh, above all else, that uh, we want Muslims to be freed from the deception of Islam, but not just freed from that deception. They have to find the truth, and the truth is not just uh, a what, it's a who. It's the person of Jesus Christ. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. By profession, it's true for all three of us. Is it true for you tonight? I pray that it is. God bless you, and until next time, please keep praying for ABN, and we look forward to see you again right here in our next program.